Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and I just saw this guy, Graham McTavish, a week ago at the incredible premiere of Outlander at the Ziegfeld Theater. Today he's joining me in studio to talk about the new season of Outlander, as well as his upcoming project, Outlander, every Saturday on Stars at 9 p.m., one of my favorite shows. Catch it every single week. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and Graham McTavish. First of all, I feel completely underdressed today. <laughs> you should. I definitely can't go to the Tartan Parade with you because no. you look like a true Scotsman, and I look like a no, yeah. no, no, no. This is this is how you dress for a Tartan Parade. Now, th I tell you what, the thing about the kilt, very practical garment, keeps you warm in the in the winter, keeps you cool in the summer. Get a nice bit of air circulating under there in the summer. It's 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 the most practical garment. People think it would be cold. It's not. I feel like I just filmed a Today Show segment with you telling me about the practical uses of the kilt. <laughs> <laughs> and back to our style expert, Graham McTavish, who tells us why the kilt is the, the rage of 2015. First of all, last time I saw you was last week. We were yeah. just talking. The premiere for Outlander, it was like a movie premiere. It's insane. And your yeah. fans are keeping me up at night because my phone notifications, it's insane. This, sh great. this show is insane. Yeah, yeah. They, they you know, I, I worked on The Hobbit. And you think you've kind of reached the pinnacle of fandom when you've done something like that with a with a with a, such a beloved story, but this exceeds it. Honestly, it exceeds it. Outlander fans are so enthusiastic. I mean, it's wonderful because it completely energizes you as well. You know, even if you're jet lagged or whatever, you're tired of it. it those guys, they're fantastic. Um, yeah. When you look at, you've been part of a franchise like The Hobbit. Now you're walking into this franchise. Is that one of your contract clauses? Hey, I'm only walking into a successful project. Yeah. I mean, how does this all happen? Yes, yes. I know it is. It feels like that, doesn't it? So, I'm sorry, how many million copies has it sold? No, no, simply not enough. Simply not enough. Come back when it's 25 million and then I'll think about it. Uh, no, it's, I, I consider myself incredibly fortunate to be part of two of those sort of things is, is just amazing. And this... What's great about this, of course, is that it's set in a real world as well. You know, Middle Earth is Middle Earth, and it's all wonderful, but that is a fictional place. Not fictional to some people, but it, it is. Uh, uh, but Scotland and the history of Scotland in the show is very real, and I think that adds a different quality to it. What I find so bemusing about the show is the edginess. I mean, we've gone with cable. You now see from nude scenes to... You know, uh, I can't even describe what we're seeing on television, but the yes. stuff that we're seeing this season, the 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 brutality is insane to me. Being part of a project where you're pushing the boundaries like that. Yeah, I know. And it gets edgier. It gets edgier as this season progresses. You know, I'm not going to give anything away, uh, but anyone who's read the books knows what's coming. But those that haven't, um, it gets pretty edgy. Uh, and there are going to be, you know, people are going to be shocked, I think, uh, by, by some of what happens at the end of the, the first season. But I think in a really good way, as you say, it's pushing the boundaries of, of TV, the relationship that Claire has with Jamie, the sexual nature of that relationship is, is, is very empowering from a, from a woman's point of view, I think. You haven't seen that representation. Of a of a woman's sexuality, I I can't remember, um, not not on TV, and it's it's great. When you look at Katrina and Sam, obviously two actors, this is their breakout role. Yeah, you've been doing this for a while. When you walk into a situation where it's essentially two unknowns, who have now hit it out of the park. I mean, mm. absolutely hit home runs yeah, here. Yeah. Is there nervousness? Are these two going to be able to, to keep... Obviously, now we know they are hitting home runs, but was there ever any apprehension about walking into a project where you had two leads that maybe weren't Sylvester Stallone? And we'll get to that in a second, but two, two established leads. No, I, I, I never had any doubts about that. Um, from the, the time I did a chemistry read with Sam, um, from that point on, I knew we were going to be in safe hands, particularly with Sam. I didn't meet Katrina until we went up to start shooting, but she's such a level headed, natural person. You know, she's, she's, she hasn't got any side to her and she's such perfect casting for that role. Um, I never had any doubts and watching them on set. Uh, yeah, I knew that they were delivering the goods. You sure. mentioned female empowerment and I think probably the greatest underlying message of this show is a strong female character yeah. and what she's able to maneuver, achieve, stay independent, 
especially during a time where that was absolutely impossible. We're in an age where you see Oscar-winning actresses talking about the lack of uh, of female empowerment in Hollywood. So to see a role like that put to the television screen on such a popular show, talk to me about that. Oh, I, I think it's it's a credit to to stars and uh, to Diana when she when she wrote it that she gave a woman such a fantastic role. I mean, you know, there are actresses that would cut off their right arm to play a character like Claire Beecham, and uh, and it's uh, it's a great vehicle for for Cat. But more importantly, I think for the show, it it sets it apart. Um, I was talking to um, an actor friend of mine uh, who said that one of the things that he finds so refreshing, and this is from a male perspective, is that it is a romantic show as well. You know, it, it is empowering, all of this, but, but it is something, it explores romance. And that's kind of missing from the television landscape, I think, and uh, before, before Outlander came along, uh, or has been for quite some time. And I think that's uh, it's a wonderful thing for an audience to suddenly reconnect with that side of TV, where they can look at it and go, these people are unashamedly in love. Yeah. Your character, there is such a fascination with Claire. And it's funny because I'm always interested. You see a character either on television and film, and then you meet them in real life. Mm. And they can be very similar. They can be completely different. You are completely different. I mean, you're like a gentleman. Or this guy's a ruffian. He's an intelligent ruffian, but an old Scotsman traditionalist. Talk yeah. to me about uh, embodying that character and, and what you wanted to set out in terms of creating him and bringing him to life from books. Well, I, I, I was very keen to show the complicated nature of Dougal. That's, that was my first uh, instinct with, with the role. And he is a complicated character. Yes, yes, he does some dodgy things and he's a bit manipulative and, <laughs> and he, you know, he's a bit uncouth when it comes to the ladies sometimes. You know, to put it mildly, but uh, at the same time, as you say, he's an intelligent guy. He has a he has the bigger picture, and the bigger picture is for him the restoration of the Stuart monarchy. That's the thing he wants. That's his super objective in the show. So everything that I did was guided by that principle. But he's also a man. You know, there was an episode, um, uh, the the boar hunt, when Geordie dies. And it was all very, very touching. And you see that side, that more sensitive side of Dougal. But then afterwards, you see him come into the surgery. He thanks Claire sincerely for what she did for his friend. In, in his own strange way. Yeah, but he <laughs> takes the time to say, you know, thank you for what you did. But within a heartbeat, he's back to, but I don't trust you. And that's why you're coming with us. And I, I find that way that Dougal can just turn so quickly from an acting point of view, it's a great gift to be able to portray that. You really embrace Dougal. I mean, between today, the premiere, and I want to talk about because you're doing the Tartan Parade today, which is really cool. The weather stinks today, but you'll light it up. You've embraced the whole Scottish flair of everything. Talk to me about that embracing because it's, uh, I love it. It's really, you're bringing the character even into the public. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, well, I'm very proud to be bringing that to the public, you know, to do the Scottish parade here, the Tartan Parade in New York is, is an incredible honor. Uh, my father, if he was alive today, would uh, would be so proud. And, um, you know, I'll be thinking of him when I'm walking up uh, Sixth Avenue tomorrow. It's, it's um, it, you know, Scotland is a character in the story. Uh, I think if we'd shot it anywhere other than Scotland, it would have it been a diminished, it, it would have been a diminished product. Uh, and it's it's great to have Scotland be seen on the world stage Again, I mean, we have had it in the past, but I think for a TV series to be set in Scotland in this way, it's it's doing great business for the Scottish tourism, I have to say. Has there been that type of feedback? That it, Has it been like, hey, guys, you're helping us, and this show is such a f just fantastic representation of country mm. Mm. And, and everything we stand for? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the, the Scottish uh, government, Scottish Tourist Board are very happy. Dune Castle alone, which is where we shoot uh, Castle Leach, um, that's had a 30% increase in visitors since the series came out. And uh, it's only just come out in the UK, so that gives you an idea of, of the impact of it. So, yeah, it's great. Stars Management, I hope you are charging money and <laughs> getting some reimbursement. <laughs> you and I were just talking as well. The Hobbit, this, but you're also joining another franchise, an iconic franchise. You're going to be in the new Rocky movie, which... I am. I was telling you, I've seen every Rocky movie 6,000 times. I'm originally from Philadelphia, so that is ingrained in my childhood. Talk to me about joining this 
just the one of the most iconic franchises in movie hi history. Oh no, I mean, I, I've wor I've worked with uh, Sly before on Rambo, the last Rambo movie, and to now work with him on the latest Rocky movie, I am. I think I am sure that I'm correct. I am the only actor to have been in both a Rocky and Rambo movie. <laughs> That's so awesome. I know I am ridiculously chuffed about that. <laughs> and he would, yeah, you're right, you're right. But uh, to to do to do be in a Rocky movie when I first met him. I was auditioning for Rambo and I was in a room, I was just there for the casting and then I looked around and I suddenly realized, you know, all these posters, there were these Rocky posters and Rambo posters and I'm like, oh my God, I'm in his office. And as I was thinking that, this presence just loomed up next to me and he went, hey, how you doing? And I looked up and I thought, oh, I won't use the words that I thought in my head, but I thought, oh my God, it's Rocky. And that's how you see him, you see him as Rocky. People refer to him as Rocky. People shout his name as Rocky. They don't say Sly, they say Rocky, or they say Champ. I mean, to have created that much of an iconic character is, yeah, it was wonderful. And to be part of it, yeah, dream come true. Does he have an understanding of the cultural significance of Rocky? Yes, he does, he does, he does, and he takes it very seriously. You know, he, he feels an obligation to the fans of those movies, and um, he understands the power of them. Uh, the power of that, that, that sort of a character, that representative character, that sort of male archetype um, that he portrays in that, and in Rambo, in a different way. But Rocky, yeah, everyone loves Rocky. When you look at these franchises that you've been a part of, what makes a Hobbit successful, or an Outlander successful, or a Rocky successful. When you when you get to be part of this, you've got to have some kind of innate look into this is why fans gravitate, millions of fans around the world gravitate to these types of things. Well, I think what well, the thing that is lies in common with all of those things is is the the responsibility that the filmmaker and the writer has towards the fans. They understand that they need to appeal to the fans and. And in writing it, in producing it, directing it, and performing in it, you take that responsibility seriously, and hopefully that translates into into fans engaging with it. If you if you try and make it as a oh you know I'm going to forget about them, I think you're going to be in trouble. But all of those franchises that you've mentioned have always remembered that the fans are what make those shows so great, and it's the same with Outland. When you look around and you see Sam and you see Katrina and you see Michael B. Jordan who is in this movie these young Hollywood stars who are yeah. really on the rise. Yeah. What's your thought of where this acting thing is going right now in Hollywood? Oh, it's exciting. It's exciting to see that new blood. You know, I, I, I know Michael through doing Creed, but I know Sam and Katrina much more through the months and months that we've spent on Outlander. And it's, it's lovely to see such decent people as well succeeding. You know, really good, good people like Sam. I've said before that Sam is Jamie Fraser. I mean, he is. He you know, that, embodies him. Yeah, that character, so separation it's it, like right? Diana knew Sam before she wrote those books and thought, I'm just going to base this on, on, on Sam Hewan and wrote those stories. And it's, uh, it's a credit to him that he's, um, he's so wonderful in them. He really is. I think, Mike, if I ever became an actor, my career path would be to follow wherever you're going because that's going to be the, the next hit franchise. Congratulations, Graham.